everybody and Merry Christmas from Chappie Peter and Chappie Christine here at the Bullia Outback Chapel. We recently visited a place called Quamby in our travels. Quamby is about 60 kilometres north of Cloncurry. The only building there, it seems, is the pub. It was built as the customs house in the 1860s when the district was into mining and cattle. The pub has been closed for nearly 10 years and the building is currently being renovated and restored to its former glory and perhaps even better. The last drink was served there in 2013 before closing. It is not open to the public till March 2023. Countless thirsty persons would have called into Quamby over the years to stop and rest over a cold one. Lemonade, of course. And no doubt many more will do the same when the pub reopens. We were disappointed that we couldn't stop and buy a cool drink because it was closed for these renovations. Apparently the cost of these had blown the budget and extended the timeline for reopening. The Aboriginal meaning of Quambi is, and I'll quote, stop, rest a while. A great name for a hotel or an inn. Just as well Mary and Joseph were not passing here when Mary's time was getting close. Reminds me of another little place where Mary and Joseph ended up stopping and resting a while as Mary's time was indeed very close. Imminent, in fact. The little town of Bethlehem. You can understand Mary and Joseph's chagrin, there's a good word for you, or dismay that is, when the landlord of the Bethlehem Inn refused them access on the grounds that there was, quote, no room in the inn. No father wants to be the key player in a roadside berth. Happily as we know, all turned out okay with alternative rustic accommodation and the young couple were soon ensconced in a dry place with dry straw for the baby's bed, a food trough. The whole scenario was certainly an upside down one. The King of Kings, born in such humble circumstances, this was the one whose whole story is teaching and philosophy of life seemed upside down. Picture baby Jesus lying in a manger in a stable. To us, surely the King of Kings should have been born down at the palace, or the Bethlehem private hospital in a royal suite, attended to by the chief medical officer of the country. Then to whom was the news of the birth of Jesus made known? To humble shepherds. It was not delivered to royalty at the palace. Certainly seemed an upside down way of bringing a king, the king above all kings, into this world. Yes, seemingly an upside down way of doing things. And consider the Beatitudes, for example, found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 to 12. Blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who mourn, and so on. No mention of blessed are the rich and qualified and powerful. No mention of blessed are those of noble birth or blessed are those with good jobs or good health. Consider the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. Surely the human mindset is that the King of Kings would come riding into town on a white stallion. And the crucifixion that first Easter, it would seem that this was an enormous defeat, a tragedy. Not so, as we know, but a victory taking on sin's penalty and taking the sting out of death. And by the way, to whom did Jesus first appear after his resurrection? To Mary Magdalene, a woman, surely in those days, surprising. So we celebrate again the coming of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords in human form to carry out the divine rescue plan for mankind. 
so that we could become children of the King. His representatives or ambassadors, wow. Ordinary people being honoured with the task, the privilege, the honour and the calling to be representatives of the King of Kings. It's fantastic, but true, that folks like you and me have a royal calling. I'll say that again, a royal calling. If that doesn't make you straighten your shoulders, it should. A mild reminder, however, that this does not go to our heads. We walk humbly yet proudly for all the right reasons in representing our Lord. After all, he was known as the Servant King, so we take on a servant role too. Servants, yes, but children of God. And an astonishing thing, as we all know, or should know, that this position in God's family is offered to all as a free gift. With a gift, there are three options, as we know, and it's especially relevant to consider what one does with gifts at Christmas time. We've all been given a gift at one time or other that we didn't value and we put to one side and neglected to avail ourselves of it or use it. As well as neglect, which we call option A, we can reject a gift. Option B, it doesn't happen very much at Christmas time and I don't think I've ever come across anyone who has said to the giver, sorry, but I won't take this gift. That's option B, as I said. Now, option C, of course, is to gladly accept the gift with a thankful heart. Sadly, the world is in the mess it is in today due to so many neglecting or rejecting the gift of Jesus purchased for us through his own execution on that Roman cross. We're coming to a time of, as the Christmas carols refer to it, a time or a season of peace and goodwill to all men. Sadly, as we've been seeing in the news, in this fallen world, this is not always the case. As we approach the Christmas season, those who claim to be Christian, who have accepted that gift of Jesus, those who show the fruits of the Spirit in their lives, are agents indeed, or ambassadors, for peace and goodwill to all men. We have a job to do as Christ's ambassadors. Are we the sort of whom our employer would be proud? As ambassadors for Jesus, do our lives, our actions, attitudes and our words exemplify our Lord? You would imagine that if you or I were ambassadors for Australia in another country, how sad it would be if we neglected or rejected the high ideals Australia stood for and the high calling and standards of being ambassadors for our country, and by doing so, disgraced our nation's leadership and our nation itself. So as ambassadors of the King of Kings, we have work to do. Good work, as the Bible in one part puts it, making the most of every opportunity. To bring peace and goodwill to all men, through kind words, generous actions, compassion, showing patience, indeed showing all the fruits of the Spirit, that in a sense are a type of uniform clearly identifying the one for whom we work and the Christian values we uphold. Giving, not seeking to get, as is the way of this world. Remember, we are in this world, but we are citizens and ambassadors for another one, the world of heaven, to which we are looking forward. It's good to be reminded of our great calling. We can straighten our shoulders indeed, represent our King, and bring a bit of heaven to the lives of those around us this Christmas. And now a prayer. Lord, this Christmas help me to consider deeply the position you want me to fill as one of your ambassadors. In a world often with no time or thought for Jesus, may you be seen in me as I represent you from day to day. Amen. Well, that's about it, folks. Bless your heaps. Have a great Christmas.